Hey friends, welcome back for another week. Exciting to have you here with us again. Megan and I are very excited to share today's stories with you. Uh, but before we do that, I promised we would have some news on Vacation Bible School. Uh, many of you have probably already heard, whether through our emails or through Facebook or even in the announcements before Mass. Um, but we have made the decision, as difficult as it was, that we're not going to run a Vacation Bible School this summer. Um, we're going to instead run our Rocky Railway theme next summer in 2021, which seems like forever away at this point, I know. Uh, but we will make sure that we're working hard to get that ready to go for you guys. For our friends who may be joining us who are a little older, uh, we are going to be running a program, a leadership development program, for young people aged 10 to 14. So stay tuned. We'll have more details on that in the weeks to come. And you would, of course, be more than welcome to join us. We do have two more friends who are going to say hi to us in just a minute here. Uh, we've still got a few leaders who haven't had the chance yet, so in just a minute we'll be joined by them, and then we're going to get rolling, as always, with our opening song today. Um, and again, whenever you're hearing these songs and, and seeing the dances and hopefully joining in at home, uh, just remember that all of this music, or at least most of this music, has been pulled from Vacation Bible Schools we've run in the past. Um, so give some thought to whether you might like to come to one in the future based on just how good some of the music and dancing is. Um, so right now we're going to head over to our two friends to say hi and then jump right into our opening song. Hi everyone, it's Rachia. I just wanted to say I hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. God hey boys bless. boys and girls, I can't wait to see you guys. I really miss you. Till then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon at St. Pius. sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God our Father, you want more than anything else to share with us all the good things of your life. That is why you sent Jesus to tell us about it and show us the way. So, when we get tired of doing good deeds, make us strong and determined again, and help us to believe in you more and more. We pray this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Every day, more and more people were becoming disciples. Soon some of them, those who spoke Greek, complained to the apostles that some of the widows were not being taken care of and were not getting enough to eat. The apostles gathered the group of disciples together and said, Our main work is to preach the word of God, and we can't stop doing that to hand out food. So choose seven people from your group, and we will ask them to take care of the food and see that it is given to those who need it. These seven people must be very wise and must be filled with the Holy Spirit. They must be people who are respected by the others. While they are doing their work, we will spend our time in prayer and in the ministry of the Word. All the disciples liked this idea, and so they chose seven people. When they took these seven to the apostles, the apostles put their hands on them and prayed over them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we hear more of this story of Jesus' early followers, more of the story of the apostles and the disciples after Jesus has died and come back. And we hear at the beginning that there are so many people becoming disciples, so many people becoming Christians, followers of Jesus, that the apostles are too busy to look after them all. They have so much other work to do, they can't afford to look after all these people. So they need some helpers. So the apostles tell the others to choose seven people to be these special helpers. Now, seven is an important number in our church, and so I think the apostles probably chose seven on purpose. If we think about it, there's seven days of the week. We might have heard about the seven sacraments, right? So this number seven is a really important number that shows up again and again in the Bible. So I think the apostles were pretty smart, and they chose seven because they thought, hey, this is a good number. This number makes us think of God. So they chose these seven people, and they prayed on them, and they asked God to give them his blessing. And we have people who do the same sort of work that they did still today. Today we have people we call deacons. And deacons have the job of helping look after the sick, of helping support those who are in need and who don't have enough money, and of just generally sharing God's word. And so the apostles, who we think of as being kind of like the first priests, made these seven people what we think of as kind of like the first deacons. You know, priests can't do it all themselves. They have to have lots of helpers. Helpers like teachers, like Megan, who helps me with this children's liturgy, like me, and like deacons, who have this very special role. And so here we hear a really neat story about not long after Jesus' death and resurrection, them choosing the very first deacons that our church ever had. So friends, we're going to move into our gospel, and we're going to stand for our gospel as we always do. This is a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to his disciples, Don't let your hearts be worried and upset. You already believe in God. Believe in me, too. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going now to prepare a place for you. But I will come back, and I will take you to be with me where I am. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't even know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Anyone who wants to come to the Father must come through me. Then Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Jesus said, Philip, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. I am the Father, and the Father is in me. You can believe me because you see the things that I do. And I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will be able to do the things that I do, and even greater things than I do, because I am going to the Father. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So have you and your family ever taken a trip to a new place? Maybe to the beach or visit family far away? But long before you decide um, you get in the car to leave your house, there's some kind of important things you gotta figure out first. First, where are you gonna go? What are you gonna need when you get there? Is it gonna be hot? Is it gonna be cold? Do you need your swimsuit? Do you need your snowsuit? Could you bring your dog or your cat or your hamster with you? Kind of a lot of things you have to think about, right? 
And then you need to pack up everything you need. And after that, you need to figure out how you're going to get there. And you have to follow your map or your GPS. And make sure you know where you're going so you don't get lost. And if you follow all these steps, okay, and you plan out your big, exciting journey, then you can kind of expect to get to the right place with everything you need to make sure you have a great time. Now, we want to go to heaven where we can live with God forever. But when we think back to our trip checklist, we on our own don't exactly know how to get there. We don't know what things we will need to pack. But in our gospel today, Thomas and Philip had the same problem. When Jesus said he was going back to heaven and that he would come back for us, they wanted to know the way to heaven and they wanted to be able to see God. But Jesus said to them, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. Jesus tells us what we need for our journey. He also shows us the way and uh, we will have a life of joy with him when we get to heaven. But how can we follow Jesus' way through this life? And what's happening right now, maybe that could be sharing our toys with our brothers and our sisters, or helping our parents around the house and doing our chores. When we live the way Jesus lived because we believe in him, we're on the right way. Jesus tells us that we'll be able to do even greater things than he has done because he will send us his Holy Spirit. So that wraps up our children's liturgy for today um, with just our last song. So I invite you all to stand up and join in for our closing song. Thank <laughs> you.